Uh, hey everybody, this is Frey. Um, today I'm actually going to give you guys an audio that I recorded about three months ago. Um, this was my trial for the site. Uh, some of the stuff I'm talking about in terms of like current events and, and like Mad Frog's current strategy, uh, they're, well, dated now, but um, otherwise the audio is, I think, perfectly worth listening to. Um, I haven't had really the time or desire to record a new one in the past couple of weeks. I've been kind of busy with work and my band and some other stuff like that. Anyway, um, I will quit this intro and let you listen to yet another intro. And uh, afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give some shout-outs and do a little talking and that kind of stuff for people who want to listen to that. Uh, okay, so uh, here's Frey from four months ago. Hey there, everybody. This is Frey doing my trial audio commentary for WCReplays.com. Uh, in the event that I am accepted into the illustrious audio commentary staff, this audio will be copyrighted 2005 WCReplays.com. Um, we're going to get this game paused up at the 2 minute and 15 second mark uh, from Mad Frog's point of view, because I'm primarily going to be talking about the undead side here. Um, there's really not many secrets in this game in terms of uh, what the players actually manage to hide from one another, so it doesn't really matter. You can have the Fog of War on or off, uh, whatever your preference is. Um, other than that, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and get this game started because uh, most of the things that I want to focus on here uh, happen kind of in the later part of the game because I feel like the the uh, early and kind of mid uh, Night Elf versus uh, Undead game has you know, it's it's been very well covered by previous audio commentators. So if you're having trouble with those particular uh, you know the kind of early phases of the game. I strongly suggest you check the archives because it's been talked about quite a bit. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get this started in 3, 2, 1, unpause. Um, Mad Frog is going Death Knight. Um, I will give a little recap of the kind of early game strategy here. Um, Death Knight is pretty much your only solid choice against Night Elf. Uh, if you try to get a little too creative with your hero choices, um, which I, I've kind of gone down that path, and I think a lot of other people have too, you end up just losing games against uh, people of your own skill level, as opposed to, you know, at least kind of going one and one with them. Uh, you, you need the Death Knight for early harassment. Um, actually, let's talk about this right now. Uh, he's going Beastmaster. Uh, you can't outcreep a Beastmaster, especially not in the very early phases of the game, because you really need your ghouls to be harvesting lumber. Um, for this reason, uh, creep stealing is really the thing to do here, and Mad Frog just stole a creep very nicely. Uh, you notice he decided against trying to go and grab the Tome of Intelligence. Uh, this is a good choice because whenever you're in this situation, you're trying to uh, steal creeps and kind of harass. Uh, you don't want to take too much damage on your Death Knight, and if you sit there and let him just shoot at you with his archers, you're going to end up with a Death Knight that only has, you know, like one or two hundred health left. You're basically going to have to go run to your base and heal, and you're going to be forced to be play very passively early on. Uh, you don't want that. Uh, Mad Frog right here uh, is buying a Staff of Teleportation and going and hopping with his ghouls, because he's going to try and creep out the expansion here. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. In most cases, uh, I think uh, most undead players at this point would continue to try and harass the uh, creeping of the Beastmaster, and they'd actually send their ghouls separately to go uh, take out some of the easier creeps on the map, and uh, hope hopefully that way would uh, kind of keep up with the Beastmaster in levels. Um... Here, uh, Mad Frog, um, you know, Mad Frog's pro, I'm not, but I don't think that this is a very good strategy at all, uh, this early expansion that he's pulling right now. Most Night Elf players, most good Night Elf players, uh, send wisps all over the freaking map, uh, especially against Undead. Um, and in this case, uh, if you saw it just a second ago, it detonated. But um, but he did uh, short round did send a wisp out, and he saw the fact that Mad Frog was trying to expand. Uh, point being, you're probably not going to hide the expansion from them. 
Uh, the other thing is, uh, when you try and set up an expansion, you're sacrificing one of your natural advantages as undead, and that's the ability to pick your battles. Um, with the Death Knight speed uh, aura, with with nukes, with the ability to coil any units that are getting killed as you're running away, with gargoyles that can fly out of trouble, uh, you have the ability to run away anytime you don't want to fight and not really get punished for it. Uh, however, once you set up an expansion, uh, that gives your opponent a way to force you to fight him, regardless of whether or not you want to. Um, now, for the most part, you know, ghouls versus archers, this looks like it's not really a bad fight for, uh, for Mad Frog to be engaged in. But in this case, there's actually, I mean, he's got one, two, three, four, six, seven, he's got about like nine archers, um, plus the quill beasts. Those uh, are able to focus down ghouls very fast, and what's going to happen is uh, Mad Frog is he's going to run out of force very quickly um, because a lot of his ghouls are going to die. Um, anyway, the end result of this is that he's got to retreat, and the money that he invested trying to expand uh, is is just you know wasted. Uh, so I definitely, I definitely don't recommend an early expansion uh, against a night elf, especially against somebody who's going beastmaster, because um, the with all the summons, he's just he's really got a lot of offensive power, and you know you don't want to you don't want him forcing a fight with you like this. Okay, so uh, that didn't work. Um, the panda's out now. Certainly, once you once you see the panda, your uh, your your ghoul play time is basically over because one haze fire and you know your ghouls are going to cease doing damage pretty much once they get hazed and they're going to die very very quickly for the fire. Uh, you certainly don't have scrolls of healing at this point. Um, so once you see the panda. Uh, it's time to send your ghouls back home. Uh, you know they they need to be either harvesting wood or maybe uh, clearing out some easy creep camps. Not fighting with the panda. Um, okay, so what do you do at that point then? Uh, one of the things that you can do is start taking your death knight and lich to harass. Um, the Death Knight did get to level 3, that's very good, he's got a lot more nuking power, and uh, he's actually managed to catch short round creeping here. With his current hero levels, uh, he can nuke down an archer that is, uh, I don't think full health, but very close to it. So uh, all you've got to do is find one that's just a little bit low on health. Consequently, uh, he's actually going to manage in a minute to make short decide to back off rather than uh, sit here and keep having his units nuke down, that sort of thing. Plus, uh, at any point here, Mad Frog could break his ghouls off and go start harassing short's base, uh, especially when short tries to start building like tech buildings or extra moon wells, and short would rather be somewhere close by so he can run them off without TP. Still, uh, until then, uh, it's still going to be a little while. Short is wisely kind of creeping around uh, more in uh, Mad Frog's portion of the map. That'll save some creeps for uh, him later when he needs to be close to his base. The Death Knight uh, is slapping the panda on his big furry ass. You know, that's kind of fun to do. Doesn't really get you much, but nothing like watching that panda ass jiggle. I mean, wow. Now is actually a pretty decent time for Mad Frog to be is be expanding, and he's doing so. Basically, uh, if you have your opponent on the run, you know he has decided I don't want to fight with you right now. Uh, whatever his reasons may be, uh, that in a, generally is a is a pretty good time to set up an expansion. Um, however, uh, when you're dealing with undead, uh, when you're playing as undead, you generally Instead of trying to keep up with your opponent's expansions, uh, you'd rather not set up one of your own and try and stop them from expanding whenever possible. Um, mainly because uh, you know your ac your acolytes are very vulnerable. Uh, in order to actually have any protection for an expansion, so that you know 
just a single hero can't walk in, kill all your peons, and then leave. Uh, you have to get towers up. Those cost money. Uh, if you want to be able to town portal to it, you got to build an Acropolis. That costs money. As opposed to a Night Elf that, you know, has a fairly well-protected expansion just from building his Tree of Life. You know, the the, uh, the Harvesting Wisps are protected. Um, it It's just, uh, it, it's not a fight that you want to get into. It, it's often better if you can just contain the Night Elf instead of trying to match them expansion for expansion. Um, regardless um, of, of that, you know, kind of general rule, um, the, this, this ends up working pretty well for Mad Frog. Um, he hasn't actually started his gold mine yet, but he's going to, and he's going to end up, you know, he's going to have an expansion, Short Round is going to have an expansion. A lot of the time... Uh, Undead can actually still beat Night Elves, even with uh, the Night Elf having one expansion and the Undead just having their main. So it's a good cushion for him. Let's talk a little bit... Uh, oh, actually no, let's focus on this battle here. Um, he basically... Uh, Mad Frog is just coming in with a harass, probably partly to distract attention from the expansion that he's trying to build. Um, he gets a good opportunity where his... For whatever reason, short rounds heroes kind of just are uh, out of pocket at the moment. So he decides to go for the archers. Uh, archers are actually about the only hard counter that night elves have to gargoyles. Uh, fortunately, ghouls counter archers pretty well for the most part, unless you get overwhelmed like Mad Frog did earlier this game. Uh, if you can pick off a lot of his archers, um, that's going to make your gargoyle harass far, far more effective. Um, and Mad Frog succeeded in doing just that. Um, this here, uh, this is pretty much your standard. This happens in like every single, you know, pro undead game it, it, uh, versus Night Elf. It's, you know, Gargs trying to 